two things to notice about this video right away. One is that if you look behind me, the mattress is gone. They, for some reason, this guest house had a, like an old bed mattress here leaning against the wall for months and months and it was always kind of a, a, a source of amusement for me. And I came out today and the mattress is gone. So you get a nice uh, clean wall behind me. I'm sitting here because, of course, I just got back to my room. I was having lunch at uh, Borderline here in Mesot, one of my favorite restaurants, if not my favorite restaurant here in the city. And I came back and I found, sitting at my door, a box. <laughs> and this is kind of an interesting box because I'm expecting a package today. I've been tracking it online all day, wondering when it's going to get here. And it's going to arrive today and I was already thinking ahead that I'm going to unbox this package when it gets here because it's quite a special one. So when I got back to my guest house and this box was sitting at my door, I thought, wow, it's here already. How did it get here so early? So without even thinking, of course, I picked it up and I took it into my room thinking, oh, wow, I get to open this box up so early today. But even as I picked it up, it was like, hold it. That doesn't feel right because I know the guy who's sending me today's package and he's very meticulous, a very good packer. And if he packs something, it's not gonna shake like this. Whatever is in this box is loose. So I thought, oh, this is, there's no way this man sent me a box where the contents are rattling around. He's just not that kind of guy. And then I looked at the box and I realized, oh, no, it's not. It isn't that box because he even sent me a picture of the package before he handed it over to the delivery company and I saw the address label on it and everything and this box doesn't have an address label on it. In fact, it says on it, brought to you by Wish Beer Home Delivery. I don't know if that's just a box or if this actually came from the Wish Beer company, no clue. If it is from Wish Beer, they probably sent it to me thinking, hoping that I would open it up on camera and they get a little bit of um, advertising out of it. I'm more than happy to do that. Um, so yeah, let's um, tear this open and see what's inside here. Again, I have no clue what this could be, like none at all. A complete mystery. Get that open. What is going on? There's something sticking all the way to the top there and that's what's uh, rattling around. And when I picked up the box, it didn't feel that heavy. But trying to pull this thing out, it's heavy. <laughs> Let's put it on its side here and uh, pull it out and we can both kind of see it at the same time. Covered in bubble wrap, loosely. What is going on? Oh, camera went really dark. What's going on? Auto exposure. I think it is a bottle of some kind. See anything else in the box? No, other than bubble wrap. That's it for the box. So there it is. And uh, let's get off this bubble wrap. For the big reveal. Oh, wow, look at that. I was not expecting this at all. Look at that. Oh, Ooh, I have it on a set focus, so it's not gonna focus on this. This is our original 12 Glenfiddich single malt scotch whiskey. <gasps> look at that. 
Well, I just can't get autofocus to work on this camera, so I set up this uh, bottle to uh, <laughs> focus on the label so you can see what I'm talking about more clearly. Yeah, number 12, does that mean it's 12 year old Duh. single malt scotch whiskey? Glen Fittich. So, I honestly don't know where this gift came from. There's no uh, name on the uh, shipping label. So I don't know if this is from a viewer of my videos. If so, thank you very much. I don't know if people know this about me, but I love a good whiskey, whether a scotch or rye. Love scotch whiskey. And actually I haven't had any for a long time. So this is going to be very nice to enjoy. In fact, I will get some ice and uh, do that right now. Though I'm thinking back to the video I made about um, Christmas in Canada and one of my family traditions that I talked about was always disguising presents and I haven't opened this yet so it feels like there really is a bottle of whiskey inside but I just realized I'm making that assumption but let's uh, open this up and see what is really inside. Yes, there you go. That. So it really is a bottle of uh, whiskey. Duh. Very nice. It took me a while to get that set up to get the ice and then have my uh, Glen Fittich ready. And uh, my landlady was showing some new people some rooms here, so I had to uh, walk away from the camera for a few minutes. But yeah, time to pour some of this over ice and give this a try. And it is a hot day today here in uh, Thailand. Oh. How do I open this? Oh, come on! Uh, there's a little uh, pull tab here. Duh! There we are. Now that should come off nicely. Yeah, I was just saying it's been very hot here. Oh another uh, covering. Ah! Oh, and a cork. Oh. Very classy. I've never had a bottle of Glen Fittich before in my entire life, so I didn't even know that this was a uh, cork. I just assumed it was a, uh, a screw cap. Wow, maybe, maybe I shouldn't even be pouring it over ice. It should be uh, enjoyed neat, but let's have some over ice. It's been a while, like I said, since I had uh, whiskey. Nice aroma, really nice. I could smell it just as I was pouring it, even from this far away. It really has that very distinct uh, aroma, scotch. Duh. That is really nice. That is a nice scotch. Single malt, 12. 12 year old, or maybe that is that just the name of this particular uh, label from uh, Glen Fittich? I don't know. But yeah, that is uh, very nice. Well, whoever um, sent me this in the mail to have it arrive today at the perfect, perfect if confusing time, thank you very much. And I'll see you right after this, hopefully with another box uh, sitting in front of me. Or maybe that will be tomorrow. We'll see how that goes. All right, we've jumped ahead in time. It is now almost exactly 24 hours later. I'm still drinking a Glen Fittich, though not for the entire 24 hours. No. <laughs> oh, you're so funny. Oh, just as nice. I've really missed that. And of course, the package I was talking about yesterday, the package I was actually expecting, 
has arrived. Oh. It arrived here uh, like 3.23 in the afternoon and then uh, I finally had it delivered to my room. Actually, I found it out on the steps of the uh, guest house because my landlady and landlord, they take delivery of these things and then they set them aside. They might bring them to my door or they'll just sort of set them aside and sort of wait until I walk past and then they uh, you know, point it out to me. So here it is. <laughs> Funny thing is I told that whole long story yesterday about how that package containing the uh, Glen Fittage. Oh, so nice. Felt wrong because the objects inside the box kind of shook back and forth and that told me it couldn't be the package from this mysterious uh, benefactor. But then this one arrived and, that, and when I shake it a little bit, don't want to shake it too much, there's just a tiny bit of you know, just a little bit of give and take inside this box. So um, it's not exactly as tightly packed as I had led you to believe it would be, but it's still obviously a very well packed uh, box. Oh, you're so funny. I find these things fascinating now because the delivery is so much a part of modern life now. If you go out walking around Mesot and you don't see a Cary Express delivery truck or delivery motorcycle, that's unusual. I mean, you will see one every single day you go out. Every walk you take, you'll see a Cary Express delivery truck, you'll see a Panda, um, you know, delivery things, delivering food. I mean, stuff is just being delivered nonstop, 24 hours a day. So I kind of went to, went to sleep last night thinking about this package on its way from Bangkok, where it started from, more about that in just a second, on its way up to uh, Mesot. And you know, some guy was out there in a truck, probably driving all night long while I was sleeping, driving my package up here uh, to Mesot, you know, so an army of delivery people are out there working hard at night now while we are all sleeping. And I, for one, uh, appreciate it very much. Anyway, do you care to guess? what might be in here before I open it. I'll give you uh, maybe two hints. The first hint is that I'm very excited about what is in here. Duh. So that can give you a clue as to what it might be. I'm also a little bit nervous, just a little bit. And I'll explain why once I open it up. Second hint is that this package is coming from the same mysterious benefactor who sent me the uh, Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus and the Galaxy Watch, which I just realized I'm not wearing right now. Shame on me. Um, and this mysterious, this mysterious benefactor, um, I mentioned last time he's from Penang, Malaysia. That's where he was born and that's his hometown. But he actually lives here in Thailand. So he's from Malaysia, but he actually lives in Thailand right now. And that's how these packages uh, can get to me so quickly. That might have been a little bit mysterious last time when I said my mysterious benefactor was from Malaysia. And yet his package you know, just practically got to me overnight. And how could it possibly have gotten here that fast? The answer to that riddle is that uh, he's actually here in Thailand, even though he was born in Malaysia. And the fact that in his last package, he gave me a Note 10 Plus and a Galaxy Watch, that might give you a hint as to what could be inside here. And believe it or not, there are actually two items in here, which makes this unboxing particularly exciting because I know what one of them is but I have no idea exactly what the second one is. I kind of know, but I honestly don't know really what the second item is. So I'm gonna to try to open this up so that I take out the first item, which I know about, and then so I don't see you know, the uh, second item. It will be a surprise to me just as much as a, a surprise to you. Well, it's relatively late in the day, so I'm losing the light. I better uh, get a move on opening this up. <laughs> so exciting. Got my sharp uh, box opening scissors. Need my glasses to do this uh, delicate operation. Cut along the side. Get through the other side. And 
And then let's get a cut right down the middle. Duh. There we go. It has begun. Oh, yeah, I have to uh, not see the uh, second item, so we have to open it carefully. Can't see anything yet. Just uh, just paper. Let's take out uh, one layer. Look at that packing job. I told you he was a professional. Ooh. I saw something there, but not enough to uh, give me any idea what it was. I'm, I'm suspecting that this is actually item number one, the one, because he told me for this item, he didn't have the original box. So I think that is number one. Let's uh, set that aside. <laughs> and uh, roll this open. Look at that. I wouldn't even know how to come up with a nice shipping paper like this. Whoa, there it is. And check that out. He sent me a number of items and each time he packages them so well that he actually puts them inside these um, Ziploc bags and these are really valuable to me as well because I'm constantly trying to put things into uh, protective bags and I have ni a nice collection of these now thanks to uh, my mysterious benefactor. Well, let's take this out. Wow, look at that. Wow. Oh. Did anyone guess a camera? If you did, give yourself a point. And this is no ordinary camera. This falls into the class of what they call premium compacts. So this is the Panasonic LX10. And this style of camera, this Panasonic LX, is sort of in the same class as the Sony RX100 series and the uh, Canon G7X series. And now kind of the Sony um, Z, the Sony ZV-1 because all of these cameras have one inch sensors in them, which are quite large sensors for such a small and lightweight body. And when the LX10 came out, I think that was one of its main selling points, as two, maybe two main selling points, is that it is so small and light. It's a true pocket camera. This thing can fit into your you know, pants pocket quite easily. And it has a one inch sensor in it is a really big sensor. The second selling point is the lens. It's a Leica 24 to 70 millimeter equivalent f 1.4 to 2.8. So at its uh, widest at uh, 24 millimeters it's an f 1.4 lens which is very fast so it's very good in low light. That's, uh, that's what I've read, that's what I've heard and um, yeah, so there it is. Uh, let me change the focusing on that uh, camera and I'll give you a closer look at it. So there it is up close, LX10. You can see it's very slim. And there's the, uh, the top of it. And it has a, a telescoping lens, so when you turn it on, the lens comes out and zooms in and out. And there is the uh, Leica lens on the front, the uh, Leica F1.4. A couple other things to say about this camera before I move on to the next mystery item. And uh, maybe the story of how this camera came into my life because this mysterious benefactor, he sent me an email basically and said, I have this Panasonic LX10 and I don't use it anymore. I, I just don't use this camera so I don't have a use for it. Do you have a use for it? And you might think at first, Doug, Another camera? I mean, how many cameras do you need? Because I now have, well, I have a GoPro, of course. Um, in a way, two GoPros, though my original GoPro is so broken now, it's hardly a GoPro anymore. Um, I still have the GoPro from Armando, which saved my neck. 
because uh, Armando sent me his uh, GoPro Hero 7 Black, and that's my main GoPro. And I have the Panasonic uh, G85, which I'm filming with right now. So I've kind of got both ends of the spectrum covered, right? I've got an action camera and a real camera. But in my mind, there's always been three categories of camera. You've got the action camera at one end of the spectrum for action stuff, for going swimming, for riding your scooter, for hiking, for rain, all that kind of activity. And then you've got the real camera, the big, heavy, monster camera that takes better quality of video, but you can't really take it everywhere because it's so big and heavy and you can't carry it around all the time. And then right in the middle between the action cam and the real camera is this, the premium compact. So I've always wanted a premium compact camera that sits right in the middle between the action camera and the full-sized camera. And this is a camera that takes excellent quality video, this premium compact uh, range. And as I said, it's small enough to fit in your pocket. And the LX10, I forgot to mention, its third huge selling point. Are you ready for this? <whistles> Flip up screen. So you can actually see yourself on the screen. It flips up. Of course, I can see it here at the back. But then if you're filming yourself, you have this screen which flips up to the top and then you can see yourself in the screen and uh, see what you're filming, which in theory makes it an amazing and excellent vlogging camera because you do like to be able to frame the shot, right? So there it is, the uh, LX10, the premium compact type of camera. And I said I was a little bit nervous about this particular camera because I definitely could use a premium compact. You know, a camera like this could be so good that I stop using all my other cameras because why would you carry a big heavy thing when you can carry a small light one and get almost as good an image quality? But the LX10 does have a couple of um, uh, disadvantages for me. One is that it does not have a microphone jack. Yeah! And when, when my benefactor contacted me by email, he pointed that out. He says, I have this you know, premium compact. You can have it if you have a use for it, but you, know, you should be aware it doesn't have a, a microphone jack. And I knew about that because I've been researching cameras, it seems like, for the, most of my life. So I knew all about this camera in advance. So I knew it didn't have a microphone jack. And because it is a Panasonic, it also has only contrast-based autofocus in video. Yeah. So the, just as my G85, I struggle with the focusing on it. I imagine I will struggle with focus on this just as much. And from the samples I've seen online, the stabilization in Panasonics in general is, is quite good. But for this model, for some reason, the stabilization is more about holding the camera steady for taking a picture. It's not designed for walking around, you know, taking video of yourself and having the camera bounce up and down in your arm. The stabilization isn't good enough for that, really. But I, what I've been doing a lot of is a lot of two camera setups. In fact, I kind of have a two camera setup going on here, of course, with the GoPro over here and the Panasonic over there to my right. And that's what I've been doing lately. I have the Panasonic running camera A, you know, my A camera. And then my B camera would be this GoPro sitting off to the side. So my idea when I said yes to my mysterious benefactor, I said, yes, I really could use that camera. My idea is to replace the GoPro with this camera when I'm doing a two camera setup because this should produce a much nicer uh, image than a GoPro does, particularly in a, in a close-up situation. You know, the GoPro has such a wide field of view, and this one, of course, you can change the field of view from 24 to 70 millimeters, and of course, it has a huge, like, massive sensor compared to the GoPro, so it works better in low light, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm gonna use this as my B camera for two camera setups, and I hope to have it in my pocket all the time, just as I walk around, 
And if I see something interesting, I can just take some video of it, not vlogging video, but sort of scenery shots and what they call B-roll. You know, I don't use a whole lot of B-roll, but maybe I should. So that's why I said to my friend, uh, yeah, definitely. You know, I can give your LX10 a good home. And uh, here it is. And I now have a three camera family going on. GoPro Premium Compact LX10 and Panasonic G85. Now, <laughs> what else is in the box? Better move faster. I'm really starting to lose the light and my Panasonic is doing all kinds of wonky things with exposure here. I've had this camera for two years and after two years, I still don't know how to do either focus or exposure on that camera. Am I that dumb or is this camera so weird? I don't know. I study the menu system and I do testing on that camera constantly. And at the end of every um, test, I end up no further ahead than I was at the beginning. But uh, <laughs> it does take nice uh, video if you manage to get it dial in, dialed in and it's uh, in a good mood. I took advantage of that little break to uh, refill my uh, Glenn Fittich. Mm. Very nice. A last thought about this LX10 before I move on is that, um, not surprisingly, um, for an older camera that uh, I assume uh, my uh, benefactor has had for a while, it's in perfect condition. I mean, if you told me this came straight out of the box from the uh, factory, I would believe you because there's not a mark on it anywhere. Um, oh, and there's something else I didn't mention. That's another, it's a very unique camera, like far, it, 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 it is unique. It also has on the front an aperture ring. Normally you control the aperture either through the menu on a, on a small camera or you might have a dial somewhere. But this has a unique um, solution to that where it has a ring right here on the front that controls the aperture. And you can go into the menu and set this ring to control any other function you want. So that I love that. Um, it's a great design where, um, yeah, it's a, it's a great solution for a small camera like this. Where do you put the controls? And if you put a ring on the front and then you can control your f-stop by spinning this ring and it's right beside the uh, focusing ring. So you can control both focusing and the aperture on this front ring. Very, very cool. Um, I haven't found the battery yet, so it's probably somewhere in, in that box. So let's uh, go back into this box. As I said, there's one more item in there that I have no idea what it is, like none at all. Here's the box. Paper is covering it up. And uh, actually, maybe you can see it before I do. What is it? I, I can't see it from here. So you, you know what it is before I do. Whoa. Not expecting this. In a million years, I was not expecting to find this. It's the GoPro Hero 9 Black. Wow. To be honest, I, 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 I yeah, I don't know what to say. Um, Based on my videos, you would never say that I'm ever at a loss for words, but I find myself at a loss for words because I was not prepared for this at all. Look at that. I, to me, I haven't even seen one. I mean, I know all about it, of course, ever since the Hero 9 Black came out. I've been dreaming about one of these for a long time. And I've, I've looked at all the reviews online. I've been pouring over this thing, but this is the first time I've seen one. And I, yeah, it comes in this incredible case. I don't want to accidentally drop anything. Whoa. Look at that. There it is. Whoa, I hardly dare pull it out. My gosh. The Hero 9 Black. 
whoa, there's way too much to talk about in turn for this camera to, to talk about in this video. But of course, the headline feature for the Hero 9 Black, in addition to all the advanced everything, like all the advanced image quality and advanced stabilization, advanced shooting molds, all of that stuff set aside, the headline feature for this GoPro is that it has a screen on the front and on the back, which of course was specifically designed for vlogging because then you can turn it around like this and see yourself in the screen and you can set up shots that way, which will be very handy. So over here, I have the GoPro Hero 7 running and I love the GoPro Hero 7 Black. Um, yeah, I've loved it ever since I got it, even though, I mean, it's a tricky camera, has a lot of glitchy things about it. But the one thing is, I don't really know if I'm in frame or not, just kind of why I was hunching over, because I'm not sure if I'm in the frame or not. But with the, Hope, the Hero 9 Black, you could just look at the screen and you could see yourself in the screen and you'll know, see whether you're in the shot or not. So that is a big advantage. The other really big change from a form factor point of view is that with the Hero 9 Black, you don't need a case anymore. Like you don't need any case at all because they built the mount into the camera frame itself. Down here in the bottom, they have these little legs and you pull those legs out and those are the GoPro mount and now you can mount it onto your tripod or anything you like and you don't have to cover it up inside a case of any kind if you don't want to. So that is very cool. Whew. And I suppose the other big feature about this one is that they've improved the microphones. So it's possible that you don't even need to plug in an external microphone or use the Rode Wireless Go because the microphones that are built into the camera, they've managed to make them uh, better and better and better. Wow. Yeah, I'll stop there talking about it because um, I'll probably end up doing a separate video about using the Hero 9 Black for the first time, you know, from, uh, <laughs> from Doug's point of view. There's just way too much to talk about right now. This is just a uh, kind of an unboxing, I guess. So I guess, and yeah, I've got um, two new batteries to go with it. The uh, rubber case, protective case, you know, that can go around the GoPro, the silicone case. And it comes with a set of um, mounts and, uh, you know, sticky mounts and things like that. And all the uh, yeah original uh, paperwork and manuals, things like that. I'll tell you something. I watch a lot of unboxing videos and reviews of camera gear, and in nearly every single review video, the reviewer makes a big deal out of ignoring these. They always pull them out of the box, and then they do this thing like ah, and they throw them across the room. Um, it's kind of a cool thing you're supposed to do. You're too good for a manual. I'm here to tell you, not me. I love these. I pour over every single item that comes out of a package. I read every word, you know, on every one of these things. And if it has a manual, like an actual manual that you can read about the product, I'm all over that. I, I get a cup of coffee, I sit down, and I read it like, a, like the latest novel from Dickens or something, you know? So yeah, I'm all about the manuals. You will never see me open a box and then toss these aside. I love these. I'm not too cool for manuals. Ah, okay. Batteries for the Panasonic. So let's end this video with me. I'll put a battery inside the Panasonic. We'll fire it up and you can see that lens come out. And then that will be the end of this uh, unboxing for today. Okay, I have a battery in the uh, Panasonic now, and let's fire it up. It's got a beautiful set of controls along the top, it really does. The mode dial, really nice and clicky. Aperture priority, shutter priority, program, manual mode, custom mode, even has one of those. 
nice and clicky, off on. It's got a, a toggle switch for wide and telephoto zoom. And I forgot to mention, uh, mosquitoes are coming out in droves. Not a fan of mosquitoes. <laughs> I'm really not. Um, yeah, wide and telephoto a toggle. And it has a built-in flash, which is uh, kind of nice for uh, pictures. There it is there. Pops up nicely. All right, let's turn it on. Here's the, uh, the lens. There you go. So the little zoom lens goes out. Wow. I'd forgotten one of the things all the reviewers say about this camera is that it has a beautiful LCD on the back. Wow. I see what they're talking about. That is nice. That is a beautiful screen. I can only hope the images it takes are just as nice as they look on the back of that screen. That is beautiful. I never expected that. I kind of forgot about that. That is a nice, uh, and it's kind of handy because one thing about these small compacts is they, they don't have a viewfinder. So you can't actually look through the camera lens. There is no viewfinder lens. So you're always working with the screen on the back. So it's nice that it is so uh, bright and so sharp. Wow, that looks amazing. Okay, so we've got uh, this Panasonic LX10 and the GoPro Hero 9 Black. I hardly know what to do with myself now. Um, there's a going to be a steep, steep learning curve for both cameras. I don't know anything at all about this one, though I am familiar with the Panasonic menu system from my uh, G85, so that will help. Um, and I'm familiar with GoPros from my Hero 7 Black, but this is a completely different camera from the uh, Hero 7 Black. So um, it's got a completely reworked menu system and feature set. So I've got a lot of learning uh, to do to figure out how to use this uh, the best. As I said, I'm, uh, I'm at a loss for words, you know? Something like this would blow my mind uh, coming from, uh, you know, a mysterious benefactor. But sending this in combination with a second camera, as amazing with this one, yeah, I'm uh, kind of left speechless. So yeah, I will leave it there, and uh, thank you very much again. And of course, I'll be back online with stories about this camera and about this one. Better move faster. I'm really starting to lose the light and my Panasonic is doing all kinds of wonky things with exposure here. I've had this camera for two years and after two years, I still don't know how to do either focus or exposure on that camera. Am I that dumb or is this camera so weird? I don't know.